Let's be honest here, sports can have some of the most beloved people in the world and some of the most hated people in the world. Lots of athletes can make a name for themselves based on their abilities, but also ruin it with something horrendous they did outside the sport. NASCAR is no different, as we have seen throughout many years drivers doing something that damages their reputation and credibility. However, there is one case where a driver did something so despicable and horrendous that stunned a lot of members in the community when the news was released. Let's talk about the story of one of the most infamous drivers in truck series history. This is the story of Rick Crawford. Rick Crawford was born in Mobile, Alabama and had an act for short track racing in the southeast. With track championships and a victory in the Snowball Derby in the 80s, it was only a matter of time before someone gave him an opportunity in the big leagues. That opportunity would come from a team known as Circle Bar Racing. The team had been trying to make it big for the last decade and a half up to this point as they attempted both races in NASCAR as well as IndyCar. At this point, their biggest highlight was making it into the 1982 Indianapolis 500 with Shet Phillip as their driver. However, they felt like Rick Crawford was going to be the driver to help them break that barrier into making it big in motorsports. They would attempt multiple cup races in the mid-90s with Rick Crawford behind the wheel, but the team would miss every single race that they attempted. Circle Bar Racing and owner Tom Mitchell quickly learned that Rick Crawford was not quite ready to make it into the big leagues, but still had an act for racing, so they decided to put all their focus on the All-Pro Series, which was a late model series in the 90s. However, it would not be the late model series where he would spend most of his career. That would be in a new form series that NASCAR decided to bring into the sport in the mid-90s. It would be known as the Super Truck Series. The Super Truck Series came into the sport in 1995. It was an idea that was tossed around all the way back in early 1991. To this day, it is used as both a developmental area for young superstars, as well as an area where drivers who weren't quite good enough to compete in the top series still ran for championships on a national level. Lots of drivers have found success in the truck series. This list includes Ron Hornaday Jr., Mike Skinner, Jack Spray, Top 09, and Matt Crafton, just to name a few. With the new series providing opportunities for teams and drivers to compete in the world of NASCAR, many teams were ready to make the jump to the truck series. One team that tried to take advantage of the new series was Circle Bar Racing. Since the relationship was strong between the two, Rick Crawford would be the one to pilot the number 14 truck starting in the 1997 season. What would ensue would be a 13 and a half year partnership competing in the NASCAR Truck Series. His title here. Dennis Setzer makes it three up on top. Dennis sets around the outside of Bobby Hamilton. Here they come get out of tighter. Sport. Presley dodging to the high side. Crawford goes down low. He tries they to make hit. the pass as they're coming to the line. It's Rick Crawford making the pass and Crawford wins the Daytona 250. What a win for Tom Mitchell. Sitting at home in Texas watching it on speed. He may not have been the driver to beat on a daily basis, but he was very consistent. So much so that he almost won the championship in 2002 with zero victories. But thanks to 12 top 5 finishes, Crawford almost snagged the championship from Mike Bliss that season. He would follow that great point season run with a victory at Daytona, the biggest race of the season. Overall, Circle Bar Racing and Rick Crawford may have not been the best team in the truck series, however they were viewed by many as pioneers of the series. After the 2009 season, the team unfortunately ran out of sponsorship, forcing them to end their run together after just four races in 2010. This would inevitably end both of their long tenure in the truck series as Circle Bar Racing would not run another race again in the series, while Rick Crawford on the other hand would run a few races after that, but nothing too memorable as his best finish in the next three years would be an 8th place finish. He attempted his last race in the truck series with Make Motorsports in 2013 at Daytona where he did not qualify for the event and decided to call it a career in the truck series. When it was all said and done, he would accumulate 5 victories, 75 top 5s, and 160 top 10s. He would leave the series as a pioneer of the division and a driver that many would remember as one of the originals when it came to the truck series.
NASCAR truck series driver in Mobile native is behind bars in Central Florida, accused of trying to set up a time to have sex with a 12 year old girl. Rick Crawford is being held in the Seminole County Jail on no bond. Federal court documents say an undercover FBI investigator posed as a father trying to sell sex with his daughter. The detective said Crawford replied to an online posting in February that was looking for people seeking a quote taboo experience. A criminal complaint says the investigator and Crawford exchanged several messages of a sexual nature. He's due in court on March 8th. In March of 2018, Rick Crawford would be arrested for attempted enticement of a minor. It was reported that he responded to a Craigslist ad looking for people who were looking for a dark taboo experience. The agent who was running the fake ad then informed Crawford that he could pay to have with his 12 year old daughter who was fictitious. The past truck series driver then agreed to pay $50 to $75 for those criminal actions. You heard that correctly. He was trying to set up a time to meet up with this man's daughter and try to do some unspeakable acts to this girl for less than $100. Something that I never thought a driver this high up in the NASCAR racing world would try to do. Luckily, this was done as a sting operation, which led to the arrest of the 60-year-old driver. Crawford would try to plead his case that he thought he was meeting an adult woman rather than a 12-year-old girl. Of course, the jury never bought that story. He would be sentenced to 130 months in prison on August of 2018, adding up to almost 11 years. He is still in prison to this day and honestly should stay in there. He was known to many as a well-respected driver who raced in the truck series for so many years. He decided to throw away any credibility that he had for his sick and twisted fantasy that he would have gone through if it wasn't for the sting operation. At one point, he was probably known as a well-respected driver that many considered to be one of the originals when it came to the truck series, but now he will be known by all as one of the most evil NASCAR drivers in history.